Computing Center review. This one here, we're going to be taking a look at the Compact SR 2010 NX. This is actually a Presario desktop built in 2006 with a Separon AMD processor. Way back in the day, this one was fairly popular for the home consumer, basically for the low end grade that people who are starting to go into computers could actually use. The specs are very bare minimal in comparison with today's standards, but as you can see here, let's take a look in closely. As we can see, it comes with, by default, this was actually coming from the factory. It comes with an AMD Separon processor running at 3400, which is the equivalent of uh, 1.8 gigahertz. They all, they've always done this in the past. Uh, overrated their processors like this uh, to give a comparison between the Intel processors so that was kind of the not the rule of thumb but that's the way they compared it back then in regards to it and they still do it now but they actually more like more or less tell the likely truth that it's actually uh, X amount of speed in regards to these things this one here also comes with an optical drive C uh, CDRW with DVD combo combo drive a whopping 512 megs of RAM, 120 gig hard drive, and also down here, if we take a look, NVIDIA GeForce 6150 LE PCI Express expansion slot. It came with PC security, which is uh, protection from virtual spam, uh, viruses, spams, spyware, so on and so forth. This here is more likely used from uh, Norton Securities. Uh, by default, and as you can see, Presario. I don't know if you can actually see this. This one down here. I'm just gonna zoom in. Here we go. That's the model number. It's also P from JP certified. Originally, it actually ran Windows XP Home Edition, Service Pack 2. There's the NVIDIA AMD Separon thing there. Now, with this particular PC. Uh, I have actually bought it at a local estate sale. Uh, this was actually from an old couple who are now uh, dearly departed. There actually were some relatives of mine. I bought this for 25 bucks with uh, some extra hardware like a scanner, keyboard, mouse, and a flat screen from HP. The thing that was wrong with it mainly was the actual power supply. Uh, they said it wouldn't power up and they were having problems with it to get it to actually run. Uh, this being in a in pristine, almost pristine condition, hardly used, it was very good for the machine at the time, but running with 512 megs of RAM and 120 gig hard drive nowadays it seems kind of small, which I do agree. Uh, what I had to do to this one specifically is that I actually had an extra power supply K, uh, power supply available for this, so I basically had to swap it out and only to realize afterwards the real reason why it wasn't working too well is probably more likely one of the capacitors on the inside of the casing itself or the power supply because it was actually receiving power, but as soon as you would turn it on, it was actually having a hard time powering up. So the reason for that being is they were well known to underpower these type of machines. And uh, let's take a quick look at the back side. And I'll show you the other end here. And you'll see some of the modifications I've already done on it already in regards to it. Okay. 
And here we go, the back side of the power of the casing itself. As you can see up here, this is actually the power supply. This is the one I switched out. I put in a heftier power supply, which is actually a 450 watt power supply, which is more than enough for this particular computer. And it also came with PS2 keyboard and mouse port, the old st fashion style, which I'm still fond of here. It comes with also a, a standard VG out. It has two other PS2 uh, connectors in front. The standard audio out. And as you can see here, down below, is the wireless card that I actually put in there. For the simple fact that this is actually going to be used for my parents. So there, I'm not going to do any rewiring of putting a, a networking cable upstairs. So I'd rather go with wireless here to make it simple. And here's the good old fashioned 56K fax modem. Uh, these ones still were fairly popular way back in the day, uh, especially when you didn't have internet of high speed, or you didn't have ADSL or cable modem. That would be would have been the alternate route in regards to it. So let's take a quick look on the inside here, uh, just to get an idea of what's inside the machine itself. And here we are. Now this is uh, the usual standard CD-ROM DVD combo. Here's the hard drive that I actually replaced. This is actually a two terabyte hard drive uh, that I did put in there because the 120 would not have done been used that heavily, especially if you consider you're going to be taking a lot of photos and videos. The 120 would have definitely filled up very quickly, so I had to replace it with a one terabyte uh, with a two terabyte hard drive. And this here is a 320 gigabyte uh, hard drive. Let me get that cable out of the way. A 320 gigabyte hard drive as the secondary one, so I had put some uh, software that I can easily install from there onto the main one. Now, as you can see here, this is the actual 450 watt power supply. I have it upside down. Let me get it right side up. Here, I may just need to get the light on. There we go. Now, this is from Star uh, Myos. Model 400L, uh, 400U. Actually, it's a 400U, uh, 400U to 500U. No, that doesn't make sense. 500. Uh, here we go. A 500 watt power supply. So I actually put, gave it more than enough power to actually work with. Uh, for the simple fact, the older one was not cutting it anymore, and it comes with a built-in fan to ke keep it cool. Here's the Aces motherboard, actually. Uh, the thing that I was very disappointed in this as well, uh, you may not see it here, but it came with three IS, uh, three PCI slots. One of them has the fax modem, which is this one, no, th this one here. This is the actual fa uh, fax modem. No, no, sorry. This is actually the wireless card that I have, the TP-Link uh, 150 wireless N. That's the 56K modem. And the memory which is all the way back in there is uh, two sticks of one gigabyte so that will bring it up to a maximum of two gigs of memory on it uh, this here should be more than enough for everyday use nowadays in comparison with the the way it was beforehand uh, mainly because for the simple fact they're not going to do that much uh, heavy work with it and what I would usually suggest, you know, for people who are not do going to be doing that much internet and heavy work with it, a single core processor should be more than enough to deal with the daily life, including going onto the internet via the wireless connection, since I do have a wireless router hooked up to my cable modem. So this here is basically good for that. Now I'm also going. I also did buy a wireless keyboard, which I'm going to add in afterwards when I do get it configured for that and bring it upstairs for them so they can have it on their high def def definition TVs and have some fun with it on their own uh, let me see let me show you in the BIOS itself just for the simple fact that we can go into it now properly without any hassles with it and now for the infamous saying as UXW Bill usually said smoke test Now I've just pressed F1 to go into the, there we go, 
and escape out and here we go now here we have some of the information 19th well obviously that's going to have to change there uh, time and date is slightly off plus and minus September no back back anyhow gotta get that fixed out but as we can see here it's running at 1.8 gigahertz as for the processor itself 128 kilobits of RAM for the primary 256 for the secondary and English US floppy not installed usually I prefer having a floppy like UXW bill and he would agree with me without the standard floppy disk it does not make it a computer but yet we got one here anyhow and for my parents use there should be more than enough and as you can see installed memory comes up to total of two gigabytes one gigabyte per thing there DDR2 and as we can see here we can see the Western Digital and the Seagate or just yeah Seagate is the one here we go some of the other stuff auto detect USB on board auto on board LAN enabled USB nothing really super fantastic after AC power failure this year I'm actually leaving as is boot time diagnostic screen yeah might as well leave that on boot device primary floppy CD-ROM hard drive network group that should be fine even though it doesn't have a floppy there it doesn't really matter I mean usually I if I did have a floppy I would put it in there just for the sake of being classical but since I don't get an extra floppy for this it's okay so here I go let's keep out of there exit save changes yes now like I said I've got this here set up with Windows 7 and I think it's actually which one was it I'm trying to remember offhand I think it's Windows 7 standard edition or regular or professional I think and it's running really well I can't complain about that boots up nicely and it works fairly well I am set myself as the admin count on here because I know they don't really need to do that much updating on it but I'll be doing that mainly myself let me log into here and you'll see what I mean okay here we are basically inside the computer I was able to log in with my account just to show you the actual processor itself the whole, whole configuration sorry about that there we go going to properties and yes I know this is not a genuine copy anyhow uh, here we go it's an AMD running There you go, running the Superion processor, 1.8 gigs, 2 gigs of RAM. Yes, I'm using the 32-bit operating system for the simple fact that it, even though the, pro, the processor is a 64-bit, it's one that I would not be pushing 64-bit on, considering it only has a maximum of 2 gigs of RAM. Let's take a look in the device manager. And I have actually just added a remote keyboard. There's the PCI soft data modem. Do, 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 do. Anyhow, that's basically it for this system. It does run good under Windows 7. Even though I wouldn't suggest going anything higher than Windows 7 with this. The uh, simple fact is, is that uh, Windows 8 8.1 and Windows 10 would probably re really slow it down a lot more so I wouldn't trust it for the life of me on running on those other operating systems it would just be too taxing on this processor but Windows 7 does work nicely on the system like this and I'm just trying to have it recalculate the uh, the stats here just to see what it says out of curiosity and of course for fun uh, I definitely would use this as a backup as for anything else so that's basically about it so until the next review 
See you guys all later.